Okay, so surprisingly, I just hit 2,500 miles on this machine. Yes, miles, with about 113, 114 hours. So very low hours on it. And I got the first issue, and it, re and it involves this front tire. Uh, halfway through one of my trips I was doing on Sunday, I heard a huge squeak from this wheel. And it's pretty obvious what it is. Anyone that has one of these machines most likely had to change it before. Uh, it's a double bearing, so it's about that wide. And it's just one single bearing on each wheel, held in by a big C-clip. Just removed a castle nut, whatever. Uh, super easy to change. I actually done a few of them when I was uh, working at uh, my old work. Uh, this one here. <laughs> if I hold it sideways here, you'll probably see more or less. You see, it is pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, so this one here is due to be changed. <laughs> So by the looks of it, surprisingly, the other side is rock solid. Uh, the back takes a virtually identical system. Uh, it's the same, well, I think the back actually takes a little bit of a larger bearing, but it's the exact same style to go in. So today I'm just going to pull it apart. Actually, I don't even really need to pull it apart. I know it's the bearing. I changed them before, like I said. Uh, it's about a $35 bearing, I believe, from the Polaris dealership, or I can go to just a bearing supply and pick one up for 20 bucks. All balls also is about 24 bucks. Uh, I can actually get a set of them, which most likely is what I'm going to do, change them both. Uh, probably get a set of them for like 40 bucks. So, but other than that, uh, the machine seems to be in great shape. So it's kind of funny too. This is one of the rims that actually has no dents on it. So like all the other rims on a machine has huge dents on them, kind of like this here, which I know is going to be pretty hard to see. You can see this one here has a pretty good dent out of it. Switch to format there, and I'm not sure if that helps uh, see the dent. Just switch to formatting on the camera. So, but yeah. Also, uh, my front control arm bushings on this side here are a little bit loose by the looks of it. I won't know for sure until I uh, take them off because I am going to remove the whole strut assembly to do this bearing. I have seen people do it with a blind hole bearing puller, just leaving the whole, uh, I guess not the hub assembly, but the whole knuckle on there, I can say, or not knuckle, but whatever the hell you call it. But I'm just going to pull it out and just do it in a vise. So it's not too hard to do it that way. So the whole strut assembly has to be dropped out of it, but whatever. Make a video as I go along with that. Sweet. Show you again how loose it is. I already got the brake caliber off. <laughs> that is pretty bad. Yeah, and it, uh, look at that, in and out too. Well, in and out means this nut's probably a little bit loose, but I know the bearing's already exploded, so it's up and down, it's all around. So, okay. <laughs> and of course that bushing there looks to be a little bit loose could be that the bolt just came loose but I know the bushings are only about five bucks a piece so and of course I was at the pressure washer but or car wash giving it a wash of course you can see missed quite a bit <laughs> so okay okay so I got that off you can see the physical bearing here can't really <laughs> that's the bearing moving, that's not any kind of rubber seal, the actual bearing is that shot. And what's funny about it is, it was actually very tight when I tested it about a uh, couple hundred miles, or maybe 200 miles before that, uh, it was super, super tight. So it's kind of weird for it to just go all of a sudden like that. I was driving at about 80 kilometers per hour, or I guess that's like 45, 50 miles per hour, and all of a sudden it just started squealing like a bitch. So that bearing just let right go. <laughs> so and it's just a one bearing. It goes up to, I guess it's about that wide. Uh, you can see the one pin here and the other pin, one there, one there. So a big pair of C clips. You just pinch it and the whole O-ring pops out. The whole knuckle assembly, like this whole assembly here, you should take off. Uh, blind hole bearing puller. You can either pull it out or you can take the whole knuckle, the whole assembly off and do it in a press, which is what I'm going to do. I do have the blind hole bearing puller, but it doesn't look like it'll go an inch and a half or whatever size that bearing is. So I'm just going to pull off the whole thing.
Okay, so quite a bit came off since last time. I pulled off uh, the lower control arm. I'm not going to undo the bottom ball joint there. Uh, don't really need to. I can just leave it on there. Uh, I also have to change those bushings. I looked at them, they're pretty screwed. Uh, other than that, I think I'm going to leave on this actual whole uh, control arm because the way I look at it on the top here, for one, even after undoing two bolts on the fenders there, uh, it seems to be a bitch to get in there without cutting a hole in the top, which I don't want to do really. <laughs> so uh, I'm not sure if I can get a shot in there with the light. But the main reason, let's see here, looks like it focused pretty good there. The main reason is by the looks of it, there's only one nut on there. So if I remove that one nut, it's going to be like a car strut where uh, you remove that one nut and the whole spring comes apart. Then you need a spring compressor and everything else, or you could just use uh, tie wire or tie straps because I can physically lift up on here and get a gap in there so it's not under. Uh... Hey, why did my light die? Oh, still on. Okay. Thought my light died, but it just got blinded by the trouble light. Uh, but pretty much I'm just going to leave it like that. I sprayed some brake clean in there and take a look at that. So, uh, yeah. You can see that split all around the bearing there. I am pretty sure that's not meant to be split like that. So, <laughs> that looks like it melted. So I'll get a better shot of it when I pulled it off, but what I'm going to do is just turn the whole thing sideways and hammer it out from the back side here. So actually looking at that, it might just be a seal, it's hard to say. No more when I pull it out. Uh, shouldn't. Hopefully it's not going to be too hard to get out of there. Uh, as for that C-clip, or that uh, whatever clip you want to call it, these guys here will make short work of it. I never even tried taking it out yet. Let's see here. If we can get this lined up. There we go. Oh yeah, that's going to be nice and easy. Look at that. So anyone that's having an issue with not getting it off, uh, ooh, that looks like it's ready to go flying. Try to release it with one hand. Come on, release. I have to release it after a video. Do not fly off and hit me in the head. So, of course, now that that's off, spray a little bit more just to break clean in there. So, don't spray it in my face. Not like I have, haven't done that before. I am going to spray a little bit of penetrating oil in there after, but just for now I want to get the mud and dirt out of it. Do a little bit more on the other side. I know it's probably going to be a stupidly long video by the way it's looking so far, but whatever. You don't have to watch it. Oh, I'm getting high off the fumes of brake clean again. Isn't that a good smell? So and by the looks of it, the whole thing was co uh, covered in never sees, so it's all internally sealed bearing. So okay, I'll end this until I get it off the rest of the way. Okay, I know a lot of people. I know a lot of people would just use sockets to get that bearing out, but this is what I'm going to use. I'm going to put the bearing in between here and smack the back end with a, either a hammer or an air hammer. So that just simply fits in on the back. I could always take that spacer out and just use the nut, and I'll tighten this up on this side. So I'll finish the rest of that after, but pretty much I'll just end up smacking the back of that and I'm sure it's going to pop out pretty easy. So by the looks of it, most people don't have any issues getting them out, but I guess I'll find oh, out. Okay, I gave it about five light hits. And you can see it already moved out uh, quite a bit. So I never bothered even bothering tightening that. I just hold it with my hand here and give it a smack. So in the way it is holding it with your hand, I know I'm not going to put too much strain on this, on the top mount there. So, because I'm kind of holding the whole thing with my hand. So if I wanted to, I could probably brace it up better or put my foot even on here. Uh, note to self, Crocs and brake clean, a lot of brake clean. Uh, do not mix. Uh, you can kind of see some shoe rubber, uh, blah, shoe rubber melting in there. So, yeah, I should have kind of waited for that to evap. But whatever, who cares? I'll continue. Okay, so I got it out of there. Uh, basically... Just used uh, this long nut and bolt combo with this uh, heavy metal 
sleeve, probably weighs about five pounds. Uh, just te it's snugging it up with pliers. Uh, I know if I was putting in a brand new one, of course, I'd be going on the outer race here by using a bigger size pipe or double stacking washers. I actually have washers that fit perfectly, or I'd uh, get rid of the sleeve altogether and put a socket on here and either use a smaller bolt or something along that line. So I know a lot of people use sockets, or I could even use the old this old bearing to put in a new one. Uh, but that's just what I had lying around, and that's what I used before. Not on this machine, but a machine that's pretty damn close, so you can see in there. Uh, nice and clean in there, so I don't even have to really worry about cleaning it up. Try to focus it a bit better there. Uh, Backsides. I know. I think someone was saying some of them had uh, C clips on both sides, but this one does not. So uh, it didn't take much at all to get it out. I ended up did switching to a slightly bigger hammer. It took about. I started off with about five to ten hits with that one. Five to ten hits with that one, and it popped out nice and slowly. So I never used any penetrating oil. I just used brake clean. If I would have sprayed penetrating oil on it, let it sit, I know it would have been easier. But again, it only took about a minute to get it out. So it's not too big of a deal. Going with the new one to put it back in should be the exact same thing. Uh, the only difference is with the new one is I'm going to put back on the bottom control arm first because then I'll be able to smack it out or smack it in with it facing this way. So I'll actually have something to hit against. So against the new control arm bushings or I might, I might even use the old control arm bushings first. Uh, I know it might not be the best for the bottom control arm, but also a new bearing I can always use a... Uh, press and press it in. I got a little handheld, uh, not a press, but it's uh, kind of like this where you bolt it in, and when you bolt it, it will be pulling in the bushing or the new bearings. Uh, as for the back, I'd have to get some big washers that fit in here. I'd have to cut the washers, but hell, I'll just probably end up smacking it with a hammer. I know it's not going to break anything, so because this thing's designed to be able to hit bumps and rocks and everything with the whole wheel, so can't see be an issue with that. So, and of course, I'll grease it up first, so. It's nice and clean, so the new bearing is going to go in freaking easy, I'm sure of it. Okay, so now i got to pick up parts tomorrow. Uh, again, there's really no point of taking apart the whole top of this. Hopefully, if anyone's watching this video, they uh, kind of zoom ahead and see that. Uh, it's not worth trying to undo it here. I'm sure of it I'm going to be able to get it back together without having to take off the entire uh, the whole arm. So I've seen a lot of people that put the whole knuckle in a vise, but they saw me truck driving by. Can't really hear it from here, but anyway, uh, yeah, that's where I'm going to end this. Uh, there's also some other work I have to do on it, so if anyone's interested in this, I uh, couldn't even see what it was. Frack. But anyway, if anyone else is interested in seeing any other work on this, I'll videotape it too. Uh, tires are already pretty bald. Again, these tires here have. Uh, 2,500 miles on them, so it's a 2011, so they are about down to 60%, I'd say, maybe maybe 70%, so uh, the back ones are a little bit more and out a little bit more, but that's, of course, because they're back. Uh, I know I got some pretty good dents in that rim there, so I'm going to probably try to pick up a set of rims and tires. Uh, I'm also going to be changing the battery, so I'm going to be going to a gel battery or something a little bit more fancy, I'm not too sure yet. CB shafts, everything else seems to be good. Uh, the diff oil, front, back, transfer kit, or the tranny, everything was all changed uh, in the spring, so I am going to be doing an oil change on it, but anyone that owns this machine knows how to freaking change oil on it, so I am not going to videotape that, it's freaking simple. Uh, coolant, everything else seems to be good, so I'm not going to touch that. Uh, the air filter is covered in oil, because the machine has been rolled again, third time this machine has been upside down so the very last time it been rolled the only damage I can really see is right here and Adam if you're watching this video yeah that's you so a little tiny nick out of there but I can just put a screwdriver on in there probably pop it back up and it's uh, no big deal all the fenders everything else held up nice uh, the first roll that I did in the winter cracked this here can I see it's cracked right here only goes up to about there but the actual fenders themselves are in good shape uh, the second up seat, both times it got rolled, bent the metal plate in the seat. So I just bent it back the first time, and then the next day after I bent it back, it got rolled again. Uh, so, you know what I mean? So, yeah, 
Okay, so I'm going to leave this video. I probably won't have an update video now for about a three or four days. Got to hope the parts are in stock. I'm sure they will, seeing I believe 2006 or 2008 to 2012 all takes the same bearings on the front. Hopefully, so okay, I'll end this video. Just want to do a show up of what the actual bearing looks like. About an inch and a quarter, inch and a half, whatever wide. Uh, I notice the two inner parts do pull out on one side. The other side seems to be tight. But this side, I think it was this side. I had much better grip on it when I had a uh, grease on my hand. There we go. This side here, of course, falls right apart. There is a lot of grease in there, so it's hard to say why it failed. Uh, the other side doesn't seem to remove like this. Uh, that spring did pop out of the seal, so that is the seal that goes around it. This one here just kind of moves, but I cannot get this one. Oh, I guess I could get it to separate. So, so technically, someone could repack these ones. So the ones I'm going to be buying are sealed ones. Uh, the way it's kind of tapered like that means you could technically retorque this wheel and probably get it to last a bit longer when it gets loose like this but as you can see in between there they actually start touching each other uh, first thing I did uh, before I did pull anything apart is I did try retorquing the wheel down the center uh, castle nut or whatever the hell you call it on the center and uh, of course that never helped so sweet came outside or okay